I've had a lot of requests from people asking how I go about making miniature models, and what I use to make them. I do have a whole playlist showing you how some specific models were made, but this video is to share what I believe are the top 10 most essential materials for model making, whether you're just beginning or have been making models for years, and this doesn't just apply to those who are making model railway scenery. I've made this list based on the premise that if you are a beginner, you won't be deterred away by not having a budget in mind. Every one of these items should be easily accessible, and some should simply be in the room around you. Number one is card. I don't believe there's anything you couldn't make with paper and card. Almost every model I've made uses them in some way, but don't be sceptical that this isn't strong enough for what you have in mind. Various thicknesses of cardstock will be useful for different things. Thin greetings card types are great for forming curves or smooth finishes, or a strong artist mountboard card can be used to form the main structure or add support to a model. It may not be a waterproof option, but this is an incredibly cheap way to make the appearance of a model. Number 2 is matchsticks and cocktail sticks. These can also find a place on any model of any scale. Whilst you could just leave them as they are as scenery items or wagon loads, they are also brilliant for construction. When I'm making windows or doors, I usually use matchsticks for the frame. When making ladders, I use a piece of card as the support for the matchsticks that then create the rungs. You can get very skilled in making models purely out of matchsticks and cocktail sticks, or you can implement them throughout models and scenery to make up the finer details. Number 3 is Jenga blocks. Here's a slightly stranger one, but when you go to the nearest craft shop and see that they charge £3.70 for one piece of wood, then you'll see what I mean. Buying a Jenga game set for either for outdoors or indoors means you can get a bulk load of strong wooden blocks suitable for strengthening models for any use. Obviously, this makes them great for the construction of landscapes, but if decorated correctly, they could also be used as crates or decking within the scenery. Number 4 is coffee stirring sticks. You may have to go out to get these as well, but if you pick up a handful every time you grab a drink at a coffee shop, then you won't have to pay for them necessarily. Stirring sticks and lollipop sticks can essentially be used like flat matchsticks, and if they don't have a wax coating on the top, then they're easy to paint and to cut with scissors. Although they probably aren't strong enough to be used in much construction work, they are great for building up wooden surfaces and scenic items. Number 5 is pens. Believe it or not, these might take some time to acquire, because ideally you need to have biros that have run out of ink. In the past I've used pen lids to make tiny megaphones, and the caps can be cut to form tiny little buckets. The hollow plastic tube within a biro is great for representing small pipes, and I'm sure depending on the pen that you're using, there's bound to be a small part that can play a role in a particular model project. Number 6 is clay. If you don't mind getting your hands messy, then you won't mind using clay. Oven drying clay can be extremely therapeutic and is a simple way of representing anything you want. After all, it's what stop motion animators use to put their moulding and patience skills to the test. Air drying clay, on the other hand, is a great means of constructing smooth, flat surfaces and can be shaped to represent rock, cobblestone, concrete, water, tiles, mounds of dirt, whatever you want. It can also be a quick way to seal over any gaps that you want covering, but it is of course prone to cracking. To prevent this, I highly recommend you apply a small layer of PVA glue to the section that you're working on, and mixing it with your hand instead of using water as this helps it to adhere to the model better, and makes the surface a lot smoother. You will need a lot of paint to make sure that none of the clay colour can be seen afterwards. Number 7 is Cotton Buds. Combined with a track rubber, these are perfect for cleaning wheels or dirty track, but once it can't be used anymore, you can cut the two ends off and paint the stem to look like pipework, or build even more fences, or a set of swings, or anything else that's cylindrical. For instance, for a quick way of making street lights and poles, you could simply paint the stem black and the cotton end yellow. There are countless ways to reuse these otherwise annoying things, basically. Number 8 is paper clips. This one should be simple enough. Since barely anyone organises things with paper anymore, you should find a few of these lying around your desk, or more accurately, the floor. These can be cut to represent any sort of wire on smaller scales, from electrical parts to hooks and handrails. Number 9 is straws. Another one that gives you an excuse to grab a coffee or a milkshake. Straws are useful for representing yet again more pipes, but can also be cut to form guttering on buildings and groundwork. You could cut them to look like small chairs, fold them over to create lampposts, 
slice them in half to look like road bumps, the idea should be jumping in mind with any project that you may be working on. Number 10 is transparent plastic. Finally, the last one however, has a more particular use. You've probably had this sort of packaging before, that has a transparent plastic either as a way to view the product or to form the box itself. As it's thin, flexible and easy to cut with scissors, this is the ideal material for representing glass and making windows. It may be difficult to keep it clean, particularly if you've got pets around with fur, but even more so it can be difficult to not stain the windows with glue. Especially if you're using super glue, use tiny amounts in each corner, and simply scratch off any marks that do make their way through. So that's my initial top 10 list of easily obtainable but very useful materials that are great for model making projects. Of course I've used all of these with model railway scenery in mind, but they can definitely be used in different scales and for different uses as well. If you like the video then let me know in the comments and if you'd like to see another one then put this suggestion down there as well and we'll see if we can do something about that. If you can think of another way that the materials in this list can be used, then add those in the comments as well, I'm sure a lot of other people would like to hear it. But for now, I hope this has helped, and best of luck on any model project you may be working on.